Wait, it's 2019 already? You know what that means, another CES is upon us, and another opportunity to give away several GeForce RTX GPUs. CES is the big annual consumer electronics show in Las Vegas, and NVIDIA is here again to announce our newest and best tech. On Sunday night, in a live presentation, our CEO announced the addition of the GeForce RTX 2060 to our lineup of next-gen GPUs, and shared the news of upcoming availability of RTX-powered gaming laptops. Our video team is on site to bring you all the details on NVIDIA's announcements, and we'll also be taking a look at some of our tech partners' CES reveals and offerings. We'll bring these to you all month, so keep an eye out on your feed for lots of great news for PC gamers and tech lovers. And just like last year, if you watch, you could win. We're giving away 10 of our most powerful gaming cards, the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. We want 10 lucky recipients to be gaming with real-time ray tracing technology and the best frame rates possible on even the most demanding PC gaming titles. To enter our CES giveaway, you only need to do two very simple things. First off, subscribe to the channel. We've got one of the best gaming communities on YouTube, so this should be an easy step. Next, comment on our videos that cover CES. That means this video, the videos we posted as early as Sunday night, and all throughout January. As we roll out new videos, we'll be picking 10 total winners at random from published comments. So the more videos you comment on, the more opportunity you have to win. That doesn't mean posting the same comment 100 times on a video, you know. That's a good way to get caught in YouTube's spam filter. But if you're selected and meet our eligibility requirements, you'll be RTX on in 2019. This is going to be a great year for gaming, and we plan to keep you informed. Don't forget to subscribe, happy commenting, and good luck. We'll see you right here on NVIDIA GeForce. What's up, GeForce fans? I'm Brandon from NVIDIA, and we've got something really special for you today. I'm sure by now most of you have heard the news about our brand new GeForce RTX GPUs. We announced them in Cologne, Germany, just before Gamescom, and now they're just about to hit the shelves. Today, we're going to open up a GeForce RTX 2080 in a special unboxing video direct from NVIDIA headquarters. And I'm also going to let you know how you can win a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. Stick around and I'll share those details later in the video. So, GeForce RTX. This is a brand new line of gaming GPUs based on our new AI-enabled Turing architecture. They're going to enable more beautiful, real-time ray trace graphics and give you a noticeable boost in performance. There are already over 30 game titles coming out that will take advantage of GeForce RTX to bring you incredible enhanced graphics that right now only NVIDIA can deliver, including AAA titles like Battlefield 5 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now let's take a look at the RTX 2080. First you notice the box. At first glance there's the familiar size and shape and we have the black, gray, and green artwork. The new RTX line has changed the way GeForce is styled. We're not seeing the more aggressive triangle-based artwork we saw in the design of our 10 series cards. This is a more streamlined, almost hypnotic, sleek design. We'll see in a bit how this design has been pulled from the backplate of the 2080, but you also see this series of repeated angled lines as a feature of our Turing and RTX products. Now, let's open it up. There we go, our first look at the card. The inside of the box was modeled on the box design of our recent Titan XB Star Wars Edition cards. With a pedestal-like foam cradle that carries the card, it's a real nice bit of industrial design that feels like it should be on display. Now let's remove the card from the plastic and set it aside for a second. Real quick, let's take a look at the accessory box, which has been designed to be flush with the foam insert, no higher than the edge of the box. Opening this up reveals all the documents and other necessary items you'll need for installation, including a display port to DVI-D dongle, quick start guide, and support guide. The last several GeForce Founders Edition models came with a single fan. But the obvious first thing you're going to notice here is the dual axial 13 blade fan array. These are powered by three phase motors, which limit vibrational noise and result in a quieter performance. The dual fans are the most visible part of the thermal management system, and they're connected to a brand new vapor chamber design, which itself is quite a feat of engineering. It's the world's first full length GPU vapor chamber, and it covers the entirety of the PCB. The vapor chamber is designed to keep the card as cool as possible by spreading heat transfer across a wider surface area to the aluminum fin array. All of this combined makes RTX cards the coolest, quietest, and most efficient cards we've ever made. When you combine the system with the card's all-new 13-phase power supply, the factory overclocked GeForce RTX 2080 provides 225 watts of power out of the box. The casing is super impressive too. It's a forged, machine-finished, die-cast aluminum form that wraps around the PCB like a continuous curved shield. Now let's take a look at the display output. There are three DisplayPort outputs with full support for DisplayPort 1.4, which will allow you to drive an 8K monitor at 60 hertz with a single connector. You'll also see an HDMI 2.0B output here and a USB Type-C connector for next-gen VR headsets. Now here's the backplate I mentioned earlier. See the design here? That's the unique GeForce RTX identity, and it's some of the only design on this very low-profile, ultra-modern looking card. This design is echoed on the sides of the card, and it provides the frame around our iconic LED-lit GeForce logo on the side. 
It's a beautiful and powerful new entry into our GPU lineup, and we'll be showing it off lots more on this channel, with upcoming GeForce Garage builds, powering upcoming gameplay demos, and especially we'll have titles with real-time ray tracing. Oh, and yeah, you probably also want to know you can get your hands on one of these. Well, you can certainly go to GeForce.com where we have all of our suppliers listed, and if you'd like a chance to win an RTX 2080 Ti, we're giving away 10 of them. For a chance to win one of these amazing GPUs, just become a subscriber of our YouTube channel, watch and comment on our recent Gamescom coverage from now until the end of September, and we'll announce the winners right here on this channel at the end of the giveaway. Hope you enjoyed this unboxing. We'll see you next time. Hello and welcome to Asus UK. So you probably already know about this card already. This is the Strix GTX 1080 08G. This was designed to be the absolute maximum in performance that the GTX 1080 can offer. It had a load of great reviews, won a load of awards, looks great too thanks to AuraSync. It has been very limited though, so it's designed for that real high performance enthusiast that wants to get the absolute maximum out of their system. So we thought we needed to come up with something else so, we have this also. If you think this looks similar, that's because it is incredibly similar. In fact, it is totally identical apart from the base clock and boost clock, which are very slightly lower. So this one is the Strix GTX 1080 A8G, or Advanced Gaming. So this is designed to be a mainstream solution to the GTX 1080. Slightly easier to get hold of, a little bit less expensive version of the GTX 1080 O8G. So, of course, this leaves people wondering. We have two very similar cards here. You can look up on our website and see that, yes, the boost clock and the base clock of the OHG are slightly higher than the AHG, but what exactly does that mean in terms of performance? We think a lot of people have been wondering this. We've actually been wondering ourselves, so we thought the only thing to do would be to test the two cards in our system here so we can find out exactly what the performance difference is between the two. So for these tests, we're going to be using our ROG PC, built for us very nicely by Pope. This has got a Maximus 8 gene in there, uh, i5 6600K, 16GB of HyperX RAM, HyperX SSD as well. So if you're looking at picking up a card like this, you probably have a system not too dissimilar to this at home. So hopefully this should be a pretty good test of performance of the two cards. We're going to put them in one by one. They'll be set both to overclock mode, but I'm not going to do any manual overclocking. So it will give you a good idea of the kind of performance you can expect out of the box on these. Um, what else? So our methodology, we're going to be testing two benchmarks in two games. So we're going to have Valley Benchmark and Heaven Benchmark. And then we're going to be testing Project Cars and Doom. So each time we run the test, I'm going to do it three times, restarting between each time. We're going to do them at both 1440p and 4K. So hopefully um, it will give us a good idea of the results and it should get rid of any outliers because I'm going to take the median result from each one. So I'll test it three times and then take the central result. So if anything goes crazy high or crazy low in one of the tests, then we can just disregard that and use a kind of average. So yeah, it should give us a great test of performance. Let's do it. Okay, so let's load up some benchmarks. For the first one, I've gone for Heaven, which is a pretty cool benchmark. It looks really nice, quite a good test of game performance as well. So at 1440p, I've maxed out the settings. At 4K, I did remove anti-aliasing, which is why the results are a little bit higher than you might expect. So the AHG gave us averages of 65.5 FPS and 37.8 FPS at 1440p and 4K respectively. The faster OHG improved our average FPS by just under one at both resolutions, gaining us 0.9 9 FPS at 1440p and 0.7 FPS at 4K. The Valley benchmark was our next test. For this one, I ran it at 1440p and 4K on maximum settings for everything. 4K resolution gives us a very similar story to the Heaven benchmark. 
that OAG gave us an extra 0.5 FPS on average, although both minimum and maximum FPS showed a bit more of a gap, with a solid 4.3 FPS increase from minimum. At 1440p though we see a rather strange result where the OAG actually averaged 0.7 FPS lower than the AAG. You might notice that the minimum FPS on the OAG here was strangely low, so it looks like that skewed the results a little bit. Even though these results are a median of three tests, I'm going to have to chalk this one up here to random variance. There's no logical reason why the minimum FPS should be lower here. Okay, so taking into account our slightly odd Valley 1440p benchmark, we've gained a performance increase of 0.75% by using the OHG as opposed to the AHG, which is not necessarily a massive amount, perhaps not something that you would notice in-game. But of course these are just benchmarks, so now we'll go over to some actual games to see what the difference in those is. So first up, we're going to be taking a look at Project Cars. Again, we're using maximum settings at 1440p and 4K resolution. Our benchmark was me taking a leisurely drive around Silverstone in an aerial atom. As you might expect, we saw some great results here, with over 60 FPS even in 4K. Here the OAG was half an FPS better, down at 1440p we gained 1.7 FPS by using the OAG. We've also got Doom ready to test, so let's give that one a quick go now. For this, we took one of the early fights in the game and recorded a benchmark over two minutes. It's actually the scene after the one you're looking at here, because after a couple of times I started clearing this in less than two minutes, so I had to pick something else to go for. This game looked incredible at 1440p and 4K, both of which we ran on Mac settings. Of course, it is difficult to recreate exactly the same scenarios each time with a game like this, and enemies behave and move differently each time, and sometimes my accuracy is a little bit hit and miss, but we're not going to talk about that. Playing Doom at 4K, we averaged 82.2 FPS on the OHG. With the AHG, we scored just 1.1 FPS lower and came out with 81.1. At 1440p it was a similar story, with 128.3 FPS on the OHG, and just about 2 frames lower it had 126.45 on the AHG. So over all our tests at both resolutions, we generally found that the OHG gave us a performance increase of around 1.5%. So it would be easy for me to say at this point, you know, ah, oh, the OHG is definitely the one to go for if you want that maximum performance, etc, etc. But with both cards performing as amazingly as they did, I'm not really sure if I can say that so easily. So 4K project cars, you're looking at 61.4 FPS compared to 61.9 FPS. Both of those are amazing results. So to be honest, going for the AHG, you're still going to get really good performance as if you went for the OHG. So hopefully this video has cleared up some of the questions you might have had about the OAG versus the AAG, the kind of performance difference you might expect between the two cards. I know it does have those specs listed on our website about the boost clock and base clock differences, but in reality it's very hard to actually quantify what that means for you in terms of performance change. So I think by doing these tests, we can very easily see exactly what you might expect, which is the OAG is a slightly faster card, but both of them do perform amazingly well. In my opinion, if I had to pick between the two, I would probably go for the AAG, to be honest. Um, that slightly more affordable price combined with you still get amazing performance out of it, I think, yeah, for me, the AAG has got to be the one to go for. But of course, that is just my opinion. So if you're in this position, if you are choosing between the OAG and the AAG, would you go for that all-out maximum performance, get those extra couple of frames, or would you go for the AAG instead, which is still very capable of getting over 60 FPS 4K in very current games? Do let us know in the comments, let us know what you think. Um, and yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching. We will be back with a new video soon. Um, if you've got any, got any thoughts on what you want us to take a look at next, by all means let us know in the comments. And yeah, if you've got some cool stuff that comes in soon, we'll be able to do that as well. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. ASUS